Hi guys. In this video, I will show you how to add columns in an entity. To begin, open the configuration wizard and access the entity customization page. On the left side of that page, you will see a list of entities. Select the entity person to start the process of creating columns for it. On the section titled Columns, click on the Add button. Column editor window will open where you are required to type in the attributes of a column. So, we're going to create a few columns for the person. The first column will be the first name of the person. On the description field, write first name of the person. However, the description field is not mandatory. You may leave the column label field blank. Ideally, this will be the display name of the column that will be shown on the person's form. You may also leave the user tip blank as it is not mandatory. This is used as a guide to the individual entering data on what value is expected on this field. So you can say here, enter person's first name. On the column data type field, choose the data type for the value that will be stored on this column. If you click on the drop down, you will see several data types that are supported by STDM. Since our column first name will store textual data, we're going to use varying length text as the data type. Click on column properties button to adjust the length of characters for this column. Below here, we have other options, mandatory, searchable, unique, and column indexed. If you select mandatory, which is advisable for first name column, it means one cannot save a person's record without entering a value in this column. Check the searchable option to include first name column as one of the fields to be used in searching person's record in STDM. Check on unique option if you want to make the data entered in this first field column unique. This means you cannot have two records with the similar first names. Column indexing option means that this column will be used by the database to optimize and improve the speed of searching records on a person's table. Once you're done, click OK to save the column. You can now see here that the first name column has been created. We can now proceed to create middle name and last name columns by following similar steps stipulated earlier. The process is equally the same as the one for the first name column. Only that, the middle name and the last name are not mandatory. We will then create a gender column, give it a description, and add a user tip. However, on the column data type, select single selection lookup. This type will allow values entered on this column to be selected from a pre-existing list of values found in other STDM tables. The table that holds these selectable values is called a lookup table. Click on the column properties to select a lookup table. A lookup property dialog box will appear containing a drop down with pre existing lookup tables from which you will select. From the drop down, we do not see any lookup that is available to store gender values. This means that we will have to create a new lookup for gender types. So, Click the New Lookup button to create a lookup table. Type a name that you want to use for the gender lookup table. Click OK to close the lookup properties window. As you can see here, the gender column has been created. At the bottom here, you can see that the gender lookup has also been created. Remember, Spaces and other non-alphanumeric characters are not allowed in a column name. If you enter any of these, you will get a warning message in the column editor window. We are then going to add an ID number column following the same process we used to create the other columns. We will use varying length texts for the column data type since national identification numbers may contain a mixture of numbers and letters, what we call alphanumeric characters. We are going to reduce the number of characters for this column to 15. We will then make it mandatory, searchable, and unique, meaning that no two person records can share the same ID number. 
click OK to finish. The last column that we're going to create is the date of birth column. Repeat the same process of creating a column just like the previous columns. Since this is a date column, we're going to select date as the data type. We will not make it mandatory, searchable, or unique. Click OK. So there you have it, the person table with six columns. If you wish to change the order of the columns, you can just drag and drop the columns to your desired order. Now, let's move on to the property entity. Just like we did in the person entity, first click on the property entity to select it. Then on the right hand side, click the add button to create a column. The first column we create will be the plot number. Now remember that any space in the name will be replaced automatically with an underscore. It is a varying text because it can contain numbers and letters. I will then reduce the length to 10 characters. I will make it mandatory that each property has a plot number to represent it. It is equally unique because no two properties can share the same plot number. Next column is the property land use. The description will show what the property is used for. The column data type is single select lookup, since we shall pick the value from a list of options. Under the column properties, we'll check to see whether there's an already existing lookup. There isn't one, so we will have to create a new lookup. Click New Lookup button and enter Property Land Use as the name for the lookup. Click OK when done. As you can see, the column property land use has been created. The last and most important column is the geometry column. This column represents the coordinates of a property on the globe. Again, to create the column, repeat the same steps as we used when creating other columns. Select the geometry type for this column and then set the geometry properties. SCDM supports seven geometry types as listed on this dropdown. For our geom underscore location column, we shall use the polygon geometry type. To select the coordinate system, type WGS space 84 on the filter space up here. It will appear on this list below here, so click on it to select. Click OK. It will then appear here as EPSG4326. Click OK and then OK to finish. So with these three columns for the property table, I feel like we have customized it well to continue with the process of customizing the profiles. Now remember, we created lookups, the gender and property land use. If you attempt to go to the next page without entering any values on these lookups, SCDM will show you a prompt telling you that those lookups do not have any values. In this case, the error prompt says that the tenure type has no value. This means that for us to move on, we have to add some values. So click on check underscore tenure underscore type on the values side. Click the plus sign. I will add ownership and tenancy. This means a person can be an owner of a property or a tenant. For the gender, I will add female and male. For the property land use, I will say either property is a residential, school, or commercial. Once you have your values for the lookups, then you can proceed by clicking next. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.